Wait a minute, man. What am I doing today? Oh my God, this mustache is unbelievable. Get rid of it. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about JLC, a brand that is dear to my heart. Whether it's a business meeting, a formal event, or just a casual outing, JLC's literally got to watch for every single occasion, right? You just can't go wrong with them, especially when you're talking about Reverso. So with all of these amazing things said about JLC, the key question is, why are they still not in the same demand level as Rolex and Patek? So in this video, I'm going to address that based on my opinion, based on my thoughts, but I also want to fly over the three models that JLC had released in 2023, this watches and wonders that stood out to me. Let's get into it. Today, I've got the VTNR, something I've not worn in a very, very long time, and today was just a day for it, right? But going back to JLC, this year, they've put out some interesting releases, especially when you talk about the Tribute Small Second Hand. This is my favorite pick because it's close to the original, because it, I just like thin watches, man, that's why. This year, JLC was generous enough to add another buy material strap. Leather and canvas is what we're talking about. A funky, sporty touch to their strap options. A very nice add-on, right? So it gives the watch an overall different aesthetics and different vibes about it. And honestly, my favorite in combination with the Mono Tribute Small Seconds Hands with the Burgundy Dial. Because the Burgundy Dial is just the best one, right? I mean, I've got the stainless steel. I'll link the video if you guys had missed it. This year, it also shines again in pink gold, which I think is an amazing add-on to this collection. The way JLC does their burgundy is unmatched. The dial features multiple layers of lacquering that have been applied on top of the sunburstish brushed dial, if that makes any sense. Now, if you want to look at the specs or what's under the hood, the watch features a hand wound 822 movement with 42 hour power reserve on an ultra thin case that now only reads it says eight mils. I don't know if you guys caught that. I didn't say MM, I said mils. Multiple color variations, the white adds a special flair when combined with the new strap, especially if you pick the blue one, right? So the new blue straps from JLC. Paired with this white doll, it's absolutely beautiful, man. It also comes in a black doll, but my favorite, as I said earlier, is the burgundy. I think you cannot go wrong with this burgundy doll in either case material, whether it be pin gold or stainless steel. Paired with the burgundy, can't go wrong with that. We then move on to the Reverso Trivia Chronograph, slightly larger in 49.4 by 29.9 mils. Once again, this Reverso Trivia Chronograph is available in pink gold with a sunray black dial or in stainless steel with a gray blue sunburst dial. It's a two-hander front display that is clean and simple. And one interesting thing that JLC had done when you flip that case to the other side, right? It's skeletonized. But not only that it's skeletonized, it's the way they played with positioning basically the different functions, a prominent minute and second railroad track and a retrograde 30 minutes indicator at six o'clock. When watch brands talk about skeletonized dial, 99% of the time they will not get it right. I mean, look at Zenith with the Defy Classic. That was a really nice looking watch. It's just not legible. You can't see it in the dark. You don't know what time it is. It is a very, very good chance that you can get it wrong or make the dial look super, super busy. But the way JLC had done it basically, one, skeletonizing the dial, but also the way they played with depth on that dial is amazing and then added the different functions the different displays what's also interesting and visible through the skeletonized dial if you look through it you can see the beveled bridges with the code de Genève finish it's something you could look at and say you know what i can deal with that this is this is not very busy you get the pin gold or the stainless steel you can't go wrong with either you have both for options exceptionally well made and decorated and truly embodies the experience of over 90 years of design movement for the reverso case i mean this is what we know jlc for i'm not sure how they have done that but that only speaks of JLC's quality I mean these guys really know what they're doing now the third rounder that stood out to me also at watches on wonders 2023 that I couldn't really get hands-on with is the reverso tribute duo face tourbillon worth noting quickly that it comes in a stunning pink gold the case measures 45.5 by 27.4 mils it's a manual wound tourbillon and features a caliber 847 demand for luxury watches or not just luxury watches any luxury product period is led by various factors but that definitely includes two that are key in terms of the success of this formula one is the brand reputation which is a big tick for jlc we know they've got that with all their quality their craftsmanship two is the historical significance and this is something that they also tick out but with all of that being said why are they not in the same level of demand as rolex or patek philippe or that other brand that i don't like they're the watchmaker of watchmakers so why the demand is not up there there are certain issues issues is maybe not the right word let's call it concerns let me explain and in my opinion i think brand awareness is one thing if you take 
for example, Rolex, they can literally post nothing at all. They can have like a black screen with text on it, just text, right? That says something new is coming and it'll still get more traction than a full blown, full well-rounded budgeted commercial for any other brand. And the reason being is because time was injected and this has been cyclical, right? So they've been working on their brand awareness for a very, very long time. Cool. If you look at the type of association also Rolex Welcome makes the in terms of their marketing campaigns and what's not, they invest heavily in sponsoring sports sponsorships, strategic partnerships as well at the same time and adding all to it the right celebrity endorsement that kind of sits as part of the curation of what that watch is. So if we're talking about an explorer, it'll be something in the mountain, it'll be with someone who comes from that industry, a celebrity that can give us the voice of what this adventure would look like. On the flip side of the coin, when you look at JLC, I feel like there is a mismatch when it comes to the type of endorsements they get. Like for instance, if we look at this one, it says here, celebrity endorsement, new ambassador, Jackson Yee. Who is Jackson Yee? The actor, dancer, and singer after talent manager discovered him at the children's talent competition where he performed a hip hop dance and signed to TF Entertainment. And why would that resonate with the Middle East market? I live in the Middle East, so why would I relate to that? Do you know what I mean? Or you don't know what I mean? And when you give your most conservative design ever to a 22 year old, I also see a mismatch with that. And that's not to say that JLC is not active with their promotion, they are, but I just genuinely feel like there's a mismatch between the type of endorsements they get or the type of celebrities they even bring as ambassadors. The second one is also the high cost. And 2023 has been an exception in terms of the price point for some of these new models. I mean, JLC had given you a pink gold chronograph that is priced very, very high, but they've also given you another option, right? So in stainless steel that is price the same price point as the stainless steel Daytona which is a good step in the right direction but overall generally it's a high price tag and I'm not just talking about the price of the watch but I'm also talking about the cost of maintaining it and servicing it because the higher the complication the higher the cost to service this watch skeletonized chronograph for example or a tourbillon you can imagine what type of payments you would be making in order to service it so I think that's another reason why it could be a little bit challenging to build up that demand for a watch that could cost you more to service to the cost of the actual watch. The third reason as well is something that I know you guys are going to call me out on it, but it is the resale value. So if you're looking at it from a perspective of how much monetary value it can retain, so it can give you that option later on maybe to change it or keep it or at least recoup most of what you paid for it. I hate to say this, but this is the truth. They don't hold value as strongly as the other brands. When I say other brands, I'm not talking about Rolex and Patek Philippe and AP and Richard Mille only, but I'm referring to brands that went up and came down as well like Vacheron for instance even something like the 56 not even the overseas still will get you most of what you paid for it's not gonna sell over retail but it will get you most of what you pay it is common advice you know to buy a JLC especially if it's a reverso from the pre-owned market because it will be a lot cheaper than what you would pay for it at retail and I don't know if this is the fourth reasoning but I just want to put it out there the look and feel of the watch overall this rectangular case if you're in a position of course to hold multiple watches and you understand the rectangular shape which is completely subjective it's not for everyone but let's say you do and you're adding it next to something else no problem you don't have to think about that too much but if you're looking at it from the perspective that this is going to be my only watch I highly suggest that you think again because it's a rectangular shape case, right? And it's just not for everyone. In general, as a secondary watch, strictly classic watch, but I don't think it's going to be your only watch. So let me know your thoughts about JLC's 2023 releases. Let me know your thoughts on the three picks that I've highlighted and the reasoning for why they're not in the same demand level as Rolex and Paddock and four other brands we know too. And let me know if I should get rid of this mustache. I don't know, do I take it off? Do I not take it off? It is a really weird mustache. I don't know why I still have it on. Catch you guys on the next one. Take care.